This video is made available by the Allegheny College Computer Science Department under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivative Works version 3.0 license. This is it. This is the home stretch on domineering. So we have do we have two methods left? We have two methods left to implement and we're going to take a look at those now. We've implemented play, we've implemented two string. So now we're going to implement play at Play at doesn't return anything, it just sticks things on the board. So, flipping back to my top secret page 51 that has this code on it, I'm going to go ahead and put this comment in. I haven't been very good at put, been, haven't been very good at putting the comments in, but I want to stress the fact that we're placing the upper left corner of the domino. And that's kind of important to realize so that when we're placing it horizontally, we would know which way we should go, and if we place it vertically, we know which way we should go. So if I want to put a domino at 0, 0, I need to make one half of it at 0, 0. So squares, row, and column is set to true. But now, depending on whether I'm going horizontally or vertically, I have to decide where the other half goes. So, if I'm placing a domino for the horizontal player, then I need to set the current row and the column one to the right of where I am to true, because that's how we indicate that there's a domino there. Otherwise, uh, I need to set the current column and the one row down as rows increase as they go down, to true. Notice the notion of a domino isn't something we have an object for. It's, it's sort of an abstract notion here. So all we're doing is setting elements of the array to true or false. And that's how we indicate that there is a domino. We don't care whether it's the left half, the right half, the top half, the bottom half. Now we see more of that in the has legal move for. We have this row offset and column offset. I'm going to go ahead and line that up nice and pretty. So why do I have these two? They're, these two local variables both get initialized to zero. And if it's the horizontal player, we want to have an offset in terms... Wait for it, wait for it. If we're the horizontal player, we're going to have a column offset. We'll see why we use that. Now columns go left, uh, are the left to right, well, increasing. So we don't change the row offset if it's the horizontal player. But if it's the vertical player, we have a row offset of one, and we leave the column offset alone. Let's take a look at how that works. In our loop, the row goes from zero to eight, minus the row offset. So if you're placing for the horizontal player, this won't change. You can place a horizontal domino in the bottom row. That's fine. Now when we're looping over columns, we go from column equals 0 to 8 minus the column offset. And again, that's because if you are placing a vertical domino, you don't, you need that um, If you're placing a vertical domino, you... Oh, poo. I think I got that all backwards. Definitely think about that one. Let me come back to that. Column, column offset. All right, so now there's that not again, that exclamation point. Let's look at it. If the square at row and column is true, or the square at the row or co and column offset uh, is true, if either of those is true, then the whole expression is true, meaning it becomes false. So only if they are both false what 
what if one of them's true? If one of them's true, then the whole expression is true, meaning we can't play there because one of the two spots contains part of a domino. So, the inverse of that is false, meaning we can't play there. So only if both elements are false will the whole expression be false, in which case it becomes true. Ah. So, I'm less confused than I was earlier, but my point is, it is late, and you'll want to puzzle through that yourself. If my explanation didn't make it better, which is likely, you need to spend time with your partner discussing what that code does. And in fact, it's possible I might ask you about it. Mm. So think about that. What does the code in there do? What are those offsets for? All right. There's no syntax errors, which means it must work. Not really. So I'm now going to run the main method. And horizontal gets to play, so let's put it in 0, 0. Hey, that's pretty good. What about 5, 5? Put the domino in the right place. 3, 3? Hey, not bad. How about 2, 2? Mmm. Not bad. But in the end, I don't actually know how to play this game, so let's see how it handles that. Oh. It handles it poorly. You know, it's stuff like this. It's stuff like this that may... Oh, there's red words. There's words in red. Red rum. Red rum. Oh, man. All right. Let's close this project. Let's create a new project. Let's create something nice. How about a basket weaving project? That sounds good. And maybe we'll create a class in there. Maybe some some nice safe hobby. Something that's not programming. That could be 